It's Friday, 10th August, and this is Top Stories by Rooster News. A vigorous southwest monsoon has left a trail of destruction across Kerala, killing at least 26 people over the last 48 hours. Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan described the situation as very grim. With water levels rising in various dams and reaching almost their maximum capacity, shutters of at least 24 reservoirs in Kerala have been opened to drain out the excess water. Heavy rains for the past two days and the release of water from the Idamalayar Dam yesterday resulted in localized flooding in low-lying areas in the northern districts of Kerala. Of the total deaths, 11 people died in the Idikki district, 5 in the Malapuram district, 3 in Vainan, 2 in Kannur, and 1 in Korikod, said a Home Ministry spokesperson. NDRF teams have been deployed in various flood affected districts Ernakulam, Alapura, Vainan, Korikod, and Palakkad to carry out humanitarian assistance and disaster relief work. An inter-ministerial central team of the central government will also visit the flood-affected areas in Kerala, while army troops are being mobilized from Bangalore for deployment in the main rain-battered southern state. The Supreme Court yesterday ordered closure of 27 resorts allegedly encroaching upon elephant corridors in the Nilgiri biosphere in Tamil Nadu. The court also gave 48 hours to 12 other resorts located there to prove approvals, failing which they too will be sealed. A bench of Justices Madan Lokur, Abdul Nazir and Deepak Gupta expressed concern about the encroachment of elephant corridors, observing that elephants are national heritage. The bench, which perused a plan of action report filed by the D- Nilgiri's district collector, said for the time being it was concerning itself with resort complexes with restaurants and commercial buildings. During the hearing, the court remarked that it was extremely unfortunate that many of the states had not responded to the center's communications to check incidents of human-animal conflict and reduce animal fatalities. The government will make a renewed attempt today to nudge the Rajya Sabha to clear the draft law making instant triple talaq or instant divorce a criminal offence. But if the opposition does not play along, government sources told reporters that it would bring in an ordinance or an emergency executive order to enact the law. The move comes just a day after the cabinet signed off on changes to the triple talaq law, officially called Muslim Women Protection of Rights on Marriage, Bill 2017, to dilute two contentious provisions. The first change allows only a woman or a close relative to file a police case against her husband for instant triple talaq, the Islamic practice that allows men to divorce their wives immediately by uttering the word talaq three times. The second amendment allows her to drop the case if the husband comes around later and they arrive at a compromise. But the government has not toned down the three-year jail penalty for the husband or the provision that only empowers a magistrate and not a local police officer to release the accused on bail. The original bill was cleared by the Lok Sabha last year but has been stuck in the Rajya Sabha where the BJP-led National Collision NDA is in minority. On February 9th this year, Eight months after her shelter home was de-recognized following financial irregularities detected by the CBI, Ms. Tripathi was invited by the administration to find couples for a mass marriage event organized by the Social Welfare Department of the UP government. Not only did the district police continue to send new inmates, including minor girls, to the shelter home in Deoria after it was de-recognized for its financial irregularities, but its supervisor, Girija Tripathi, continued to participate in official functions, even after the government's order to shut down the institution. According to the UP Child and Women Welfare Department, the shelter home received a grant of around 90 lakhs from 2012 to 2017 under the ICPS. 
now under arrest for alleged sexual exploitation of inmates in her shelter home ms ripati enjoyed considerable goodwill and clout among the local administration and the police who honored her on many occasions according to a local source the previous district police chief had appointed her as the main coordinator of a police project under which compromise meetings were held to sort out differences between quarreling spouses every weekend a business conglomerate with presence in cement sugar and power industries has expressed its interest to adopt the historic fort st george the seat of power of the tamil nadu government under the adopt a heritage scheme if the expression of interest submitted by the business house is accepted fort st george would be the first site in south india to be adopted under this scheme a joint project of the union ministries of tourism and culture and the archaeological survey of india or asi they aim to develop heritage sites and monuments to increase their potential as tourist attractions and preserve them given their cultural importance the expression of interest was approved at a meeting of senior officials of the ministries in delhi last month but unlike the red fort in delhi which has already been adopted under the scheme the handing over of fort st george may prove to be an administrative challenge as it is currently occupied by three entities the state government its secretariat and the assembly the army and the asi we round up this news cast with fuel prices from key metros in delhi petrol is sold for 77.10 rupees per liter and diesel for 68.54 rupees per liter in chennai petrol is sold for 80.09 rupees per liter and diesel for 72.39 rupees per liter in kolkata petrol is sold for 80.04 rupees per liter and diesel for 71.35 rupees per liter in mumbai petrol is sold for 84.54 rupees per liter and diesel for 72.76 rupees per liter